Hi everybody, Joe here. How are you doing today? I hope you're keeping well. Thanks for joining me. Today I thought we'd go a bit festive. Um, I'm really trying to make an effort and make some Christmas card designs. Um, and those of you that follow me know I've got a bit of a thing about wreath cards. We all have certain designs we go for, don't we? The thing I love about wreath cards is you can make them as um, intricate and extravagant as you want, or you can make them quite simple. And I must admit, I was looking for a design. I love a design at Christmas that I can batch card make. Um, I mention that quite a lot, but I think quite often it's nice to make um, individual ones for special family members, which I could do with this, but I could add more to this and make it larger. But also, I think this on its own is, is nice and simple, but I could make six or seven of these in one go. And that's what I'm looking for with batch card making. Also, I like to look for a design that I could alter the colour tones. So this is my offering today. And I'm hoping even if you don't actually create this design, it might inspire you just part of the design to take part of the design and then wander off with it and maybe add different stamps. I mean, I thought I'd start with a limited supply. Sometimes we can add lots and lots of different stamps, lots of different colours. So I'm just going to use a, a few stamps for this. Um, and as I say, that's my idea behind it. And I've gone for a six by six again. You know, I use my ready-made bought card blanks and this is a six by six because it's ideal for postage. Again, I'm, I'm mindful Christmas thinking postage already. I have just been and bought myself some um, stamps ready to just put in the drawer ready for Christmas. I don't know if that makes me sad or maybe it makes me organised. I think in my head I'll go for the organised. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a piece of multifarious card and this is five and a half inches square. And I've gone for this because, as I say, it's perfect for my six by six card blanks. And I'm going to edge it. Now, I don't know if you can pick up on this. It's actually got a little bit of a, a gold edge. I'm not sure how my camera skills aren't that good, as you can see. But quite often I go around with a black sharpie, don't I? Well... I must admit, I managed to get my hands on some gold and silver Sharpies. But if you've got any of your metallic pens, um, I've got a metallic Posca, but the nib's a bit narrow. So really, I need to buy one of the bigger nibs in the, in the Posca and I could use that. Now, a few of you have messaged and said you're very worried about doing this. Now, again, my advice would be if you do it first like this, then if you were to make a Horlix of it, it wouldn't matter because you can always turn it over because obviously we use double-sided card don't we so but honestly it's the hand take a piece of kitchen towel just for your hand and just press your card down and that's the biggest thing copy your paper underneath and just make sure your cards press down and if you do that no problem and we're just going to do all four sides see now i've said that you can imagine it's gonna it's gonna go funny isn't it like I say, I used to use a ruler, but one day I thought, no, come on, let's be big, let's be grown up. And I have to say, since I've done it this way, it's much quicker. I just thought that made it more festive with the, with the gold. So keep your eye open for those, gold, silver and copper. And what we're going to do now is just to create our basic shape. I know a lot of you struggle with, um, you can stamp it, and I've done a few videos on that, but I thought for somebody who's, say, new, or, again, if you want to make quite a few in a rush, well, I shouldn't say rush, should I? Although, let's be honest, we know what us crafters are like. I mean, how many times do you actually sit down and have the leisurely time to craft? Or is it just me that always needs that card on the last minute, the one I forget about? number of times I've done that have you ever done that have you ever not got any somebody a card say a Christmas card and then they turn up and they've got one for you I bet you all have your emergency cards ready for that don't you I bet you do I hope mine's not one of those emergency ones you know <laughs> so what I've done here is I've got the um circle masks so these acetate circle masks and I'm going for the larger one look and as always, it's got a little bit of Posca on because when I put that down, it just disappears. So I can see exactly where it is. 
and I'm going to use the Elements ink pads today and I'm using Paprika. I just thought it was a lovely sort of nice sort of browny but Christmassy colour. Now the thing is, do remember these ink pads are so juicy, so full of pigment. I mean, I think that's all I'm going to need. So I'm actually going to put my lid on and move that away. So this is Paprika and I'm just taking some off on my mat because I can always build this colour up, but if I go in too heavy, I'm just going to put that, can you see, okay, I'm going to hold it. Now, always, even though I've taken some ink off on there, let's take some more off on there. And then what I want to do is just flick out and go all the way around with a gentle sort of flick. And again, you have to be a bit of a, I mean, you could take this down, but to be honest, I'd rather just hold it. And I just want to build up. You'd be amazed how much ink look on your brush. But these brushes are so good for this. They're so soft. And what I want to do is just sort of keep flicking in a bit more in the corners. I sort of want a circular shape, but I want it just a bit more of a flick in the corners. And almost a bit of an airbrushed. And again, the key to this, if you get lines or you've got too much colour, turn it over, have another go. It's just get used to taking most of that ink off on there and on there. I mean, I know I go on and on about it, but honestly, it really is gently, gently. And lift that off. Look. Now, to me, if I was batch card making, I could literally get another piece of card. I've got enough ink there, probably to do another two or three. And you've obviously got ink left on there. So it would be much easier when you've got your stuff out to actually do that. Now, I'm just going to wipe this up because obviously you don't want to see me do more and batch card make. Although that would be funny. Do you fancy just joining me for the afternoon and we could do a batch card making session? Now, that would be good, wouldn't it? Because we could, well, if it was Christmas, what would we have? A nice Christmassy coffee. What do you think? Oh, Black Forest Gatto coffee. Mm. And maybe we'd have to have some Christmas cake or mince pies. Oh, what do you think? We could have a full afternoon, couldn't we? What we'll do now, right, stop, stop thinking about food. Come on, concentrate. We're going to use this lovely fir cone branch stamp. And I'm going to use my Versafine Claire, but I'm using the Acorn, this lovely brown colour. I use it quite a lot, to be honest. Now, I know that this stamp will stamp three times. So I'm going to be mindful to do my first stamp. I don't want it definitely at the bottom in the middle. And I'm just going to put it at slight. So I'm just putting the brown ink on. And as I say, this one, I know it, it just does the, the three. And the other thing is, if I look and use this circle and just put the actual bit of the branch and almost like the fur cone bit at the front on here, I know that that'll give me that sort of shape. Now, have you noticed I snuck in my new Lavinia stamp acrylic blocks? And these are perfect because, look, you can press in the middle. Look at those. It even says Lavinia stamps. And they do a gorgeous dinky one. Look at that. How cute is that? So I'm going to turn this round. So we're going to stamp this three times. I'm just going to take that bit off there. Got a bit of over inking. Now the same sort of thing, roughly. I don't want to put my head right in front of this. So look, go for that about there. The good thing is the circle is just to give you an idea. So don't worry too much. It's just to give you that, that nice idea. And then hopefully another one there, look. If you haven't got any of the coloured Versafine, maybe next time you put an order in, maybe have a look at getting a couple. I mean, I must admit, I use the brown, this acorn, a lot. I think it's really good for men's cards, vintage cards. Now and again, I'm just going to try and get this in the middle. So sorry if my head <laughs> comes over. And again, let that ink soak in. 
And as I say, the beauty of these blocks is you can press and lift. Now, although this one hasn't come out quite as solid as the others, that's fine because I'm going for this is snow on it, look. See, got my answer ready. Now, what I'm going to do now is I've got the little pound fur cone stamp and this is great for filling in the gaps. In fact, if I just take the, do it this way. And what I'm thinking is, if I put one that way, and then what's nice is just to put one that way. Now again, we've got three spaces to do this. Right, take me into it. Let's do it properly. I'll just overlap that. And as I say, with these, you can build them up as much or as little as you want. I didn't want to add too much to this one. As I say, I was thinking of a nice, clean and simple design. Now, I purposely haven't put a greeting on it because quite often I wait and see what type of greeting. But in the finished design, you have got an area. You could even put a raised ribbon banner across the front or I could just put something down here. I quite often like to leave my designs without a greeting and then decide. Now, I've got another little stamp that I'm going to use now. And this is actually off the Berry Wreath set. And it's this little one here, look. And I find this so useful. And I'm going to come in with Chianti for this. Just thought for the berries. And again, I don't want too much of the berries. I just want a little bit. So I'm going to go work my way around, look. And I'm just going to put them there. And then I'm just going to alternate the side of the wreath. Like I say, I don't want too many. And for me, I find it easier to turn my card as I'm going round. As I say, that just works easier for me. And then have another one this way. Like I say, I don't want to over, over fuss it. Turn it round. Again, just keep turning it round. And then one more, I think, just there. Let's have a look. And then you could leave the cones if you wanted like that. But I want to add a little bit of colour. And I just want to take, just give them a bit of um almost. So what I've done in my palette here is I've got a little bit of watercolour paint and I've got sort of a brown and an, an ochre and mustardy sort of colour. And I'm just going to mix a little bit of water to both. And then what I'm going to do, I want this quite watery. I'm going to add a bit of that and a bit of that. See, I want them brown, but I sort of want a bit of almost the, the mustard in it. And I want it quite watery. And that's purely because I want to dab my colour in. And I don't want it to obliterate my ink. I want to be able to see that ink through it. And also here, we've got the ink underneath, haven't we? And I just want to give that idea of the brown of the fur cones. So I'm sort of dabbing it in rather than being really careful and doing, you know, um, watercolour painting. And like I say, this way, I find I can still see the inking underneath the stamping. And also, to be honest... I don't need to spend ages doing fantastic watercolour. Like I say, I'm thinking of something that I could batch card make. And obviously this paint will go a long, long way. And there's such a lovely shape to just get some, get some colour on.
There we go. One more left. Now, if you collect the little um, fir cones from your garden, you could even add a couple, couldn't you, of those? That would be lovely. You know, already, it's built up so nice. It is funny, though. I spend ages, actually, turning it round because oh, I think that looks better that way. Don't ask me why. That's bizarre, isn't it? Right, I'll put my paint to one side and then we'll just bring in our white jelly roll and just add some little white highlights on those berries. It's amazing how it just brings them to life. Now again, you will spend a little bit longer than me who's just going dot, dot, dot. Now you could add white highlights, but I'm just going to add some snow. Just going to add some flicks of snow. And what I'm going to do to add that, so there's lots of ways. I know a few of you have asked about the snow. Lots of things you can do. You can get your white, white Posca pen. And because, I mean, this is our card, more or less finished. You can get your white Posca, give it a shake and add some splats. Now, we've done that before. You can use um, white embossing. You can use the ultra thick, but I'm going to use some paint. And again, for me, for batch card making, what I would do is get all my, um, say if I did six at once, get all six cards together and actually flick the paint on them all together. Because obviously when I flick it, I mean, look at my um, my acorn. This has obviously been in the flicking, hasn't it? So I do try and move things before I flick my paint. So if I have more designs at the same time, it's obviously much better. And I'm just going to put a little bit of paint on my mat and then get my fan brush, which is in my water pot. And then just a little bit of water with it. And then we're just going to add. Now, obviously, if you wanted to add, quite often what I, what I could do is add a little bit of glitter first. So, again, I'm just going to put some stickles on my mat. And then just add i'm just i don't want much i just want a little bit now again i could add my um glitter my eco glitter if i wanted different colors i just need a new must get a new um glue pen quickie glue pen mine's done that thing of stopping working so i need another one so i'm just coming in with the stickles for now there we go and then, oh, I love this bit. So I want to try and just frame it round here. So what I'm going to do is just gently add a few like this and then turn it round. A few more round here. Try and keep it quite controlled. And then a few more round here. And obviously I put far too much paint out. because I didn't need all that, did I? But that's why for batch card making, I would do three or four of them at the same time. Got to be honest, I think a, a big mat is sort of ideal for that. And, and that's all there is to it, look. I know what I'll do. If I open that one, look, and then I can pop that on there to show you. Now, the beauty of it is, as I say, you can add a sentiment. You could add a little bow here. As I say, you could add some little fur cones. You could even add some more stamping if you wanted. You can take it to whatever level, but I thought it was nice to have quite a, a clean and simple a starting point. I mean, the owl, if you wanted to build up more of a scene inside, you could do that. I mean, we have done that before. So I just thought for this one, we'll just stick with it. a simple lovely stylish wreath but i'm thinking what other color tones could we use i'm looking at my element sink pads thinking oh maybe i could try one in each color that would be lovely wouldn't it and do a whole set now don't forget if you have a go do put them on our lavinia for you facebook in our group and tag me in please because i'd love to see what you get up to so thank you for joining me today and you know what that means another two christmas cards done for me I think this is the earliest I've ever started on my Christmas cards. <laughs> Can't believe it. 
So I'm off now to create some more and some more colours. I think I might just go for Blue Lagoon next. Or shall I try Henna? Right, too many choices. You take care, everybody. Thanks for popping in. Much love and hugs. Bye for now.